Hi, it's Thursday, July 2nd, 2020. My name is Noah Seeley, and welcome to my channel. So today we're back to discuss another reinforcement learning article, but we're going to leave behind Google DeepMind's DQN related papers for now and move on to another realm of reinforcement learning in order to work towards a better perspective on reinforcement learning as a whole. Today's paper is called Asynchronous Methods for Deep Reinforcement Learning. This paper is once again written by the Google DeepMind's team, but we'll see how they introduce a new concept known as policy gradients, which will basically replace what we currently know as Q learning, if you've been following my videos so far. This paper was released a year after a lot of the DQN research that we've been looking at came out. So just keep that in mind if you're curious about the timeline of all of these papers. As usual, we're going to be covering this paper in two parts. Today, we'll cover the introduction, related work, and reinforcement learning background sections of the paper. But before we do that, if anything related to reinforcement learning still feels a little bit fuzzy, I've linked my two-part introduction series to reinforcement learning in the description below. They're quick videos that briefly introduce the definitions, processes, and applications of reinforcement learning. If you're feeling all caught up though, without any further delay, let's get into the paper. The introduction section begins with the team saying that previously, the combination of reinforcement learning algorithms and deep machine learning models was unstable. This statement was proven wrong by work such as the DQN agent, which we've previously reviewed. This work was able to show that machine learning models can be used with reinforcement learning to make some very effective agents relative to previous work. They say that common features among a lot of work combining reinforcement learning and deep networks is that the sequence of data encountered by an online RL agent is non-stationary and online updates are strongly correlated. This data can be extrapolated in various ways from the different time steps of an agent by storing it in an experience replay memory. This takes away local correlations between time steps for an agent, but also adds a layer of inefficiency to both time and space for off-policy reinforcement learning algorithms. The team comments that while deep reinforcement learning has so far done some pretty amazing things, experience replay provides various drawbacks as it takes up time, space, and requires off-policy learning algorithms to update from previous policies. This paper offers a different approach to deep reinforcement learning in order to try and work out the problems experience replay presents. They plan on asynchronously executing many agents in parallel on multiple instances of an environment. The decorrelation that experience replay presents will still exist with this method as at any given time, the agent is experiencing many different states. Due to the fact that experience replay is out of the way, on-policy reinforcement learning algorithms can now be deployed, making a more efficient model. They are also able to run this agent on a multi-core CPU rather than requiring many expensive GPUs as experience replay had, making the whole project much more cost efficient to the lab. So here's the spoiler part of the introduction section. The agent was able to outperform anything previously made and will soon find out how and why. So the related work section shows some examples in other areas of reinforcement learning where these types of ideas are being executed. They talk about another asynchronous learning algorithm called Gorilla, which has actors, which acts in their own copy of the environment, a separate replay memory, and a learn that samples data from the replay memory and calculates the loss function for learning. The gradients from that loss function are then sent to a central server, which updates a global copy of the model. They also discuss the map reduce framework, which simply parallelized batch reinforcement learning techniques. The map reduce would speed up calculations as instead of doing calculations one by one in a given model, there's now a way to do many at once. There is also some work published to show that the convergence is still possible with asynchronous Q learning methods, as long as outdated data is updated. The last piece of work mentioned in this section relates to evolutionary methods, which are often parallelized over multiple machines through many generations of agents. Recent to this paper, some reinforcement learning tasks were solved using these types of parallel evolutionary methods. The reinforcement learning background section describes the fundamental reinforcement algorithm as we've seen so many times now. An agent will be deployed to interact with an environment. At each time step, they're given a state and return an action from a set list of actions according to its policy. The environment will then return a new state and a scalar reward based on the action that it was received. This process continues until the environment somehow terminates. The goal of the agent is to maximize the reward function, which is the sum of all returns over the course of a run for the agent. The action value is the expected return given an action in a state, where the optimal value function is the greatest return given an action in a state. Lastly, the value state function is the return for following the policy at a given state. The section goes on to say that in value-based model-free deep reinforcement learning, the action value function is represented by using a function approximator, such as a neural network. This will have parameters that are 
either to be updated according to a chosen reinforcement learning algorithm. They then describe a reinforcement learning algorithm known as one-step Q learning and indicate that the drawbacks are that a reward will only directly affect the state action pairs that led to that reward, as it will only update the value function corresponding to that reward. They offer an improvement, n-step Q learning, which will propagate rewards faster. This algorithm will update an action value pair as well as the functions following it. This lets the reward directly affect all of those functions and will lead to propagating to relevant state action pairs more efficiently. They then discuss model-free policy-based algorithms, which directly parameterize the policy and maximize it using gradient ascent in order to get the optimal policy. They note an algorithm which uses this method called reinforce in all caps. The section finishes by describing what's called an actor critic architecture, where a learned estimate of the value function, known as the critic, is used to interact with the policy, the actor, in order for the agent to learn. So yeah, that concludes part one of my discussion on the asynchronous methods for deep reinforcement learning paper by the Google DeepMinds team. I think these sections of the paper offered a really good review of many different concepts within reinforcement learning. I should have part two already for tomorrow, where we'll cover the asynchronous RL frameworks, experiments, and discussions and conclusions sections. There are also some more technical bits in today's paper. So as always, I've linked all resources that I've used in the description below for you guys to go check out yourselves. If you feel that I missed anything or got anything wrong, please let me know in the comment section below. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.